Hello and welcome to XLEX. My name is Hannes Schweiger from Uranium Research in Austria, and it's a pleasure to welcome you for another interview with a project partner of this Horizon 2020 project. Um, as already mentioned several times before, this interview is part of a series of introducing all 12 project partners. And today we are joining the company Petrol in Slovenia. On behalf of the entire team in Ljubljana, I'm now connected with Mr. Bojan Stojanovic as our interview partner today. He is head of EU projects with special focus on energy and environmental issues at Petrol. Um, hello, Bojan, nice to meet you. Hi to everybody. So my name is Bojan Stojanovic. I come from Slovenia. I represent the company Petrol, which is the biggest ESCO company, so energy service company in Slovenia. Um, I'm with the company for almost four years now. Um, and Petrol is um, more or less the, bigger inve the biggest investor, investor in renewable sources of energy and energy efficiency in general in Slovenia and also around the region uh, of, of Adria region. Um, so Petrol is uh, one of the biggest players in this energy transition that we are currently going through now. Uh, it is, uh, from the basic point of view, an oil and gas company. But as all these companies are having uh, their own transition in the last 20, 30 years, it, the same happened with Petrol. So more and more investments, around 50% of investments are now uh, directed towards renewables and energy efficiency and innovative market solutions like we are providing and developing here in Nixplex. Uh, what would you say, what is your specific role in the project and in which tasks and work yeah. packages are you involved? So I'm responsible for overall management of uh, XPLEX project in Petrol. So I'm sort of a coordinator and manager of the project. Uh, I work constantly with our technical team, uh, which are developing the IoT platforms and all the other um, technological sources that we, are, that we are working with and developing with. And I have more or less three teams, one from IT, uh, one from around an Akoroshkem pilot site and one from Luce pilot site, which are both pilot sites in, in Xflex. So around 20 people are working on the project. So, and I'm the main coordinator of them. I represent also Petrol in all these uh, public, um, public events. Uh, I present the project in different conferences. I do a lot of PR. We do a lot of uh, filming on, in the field and trying to promote the project as much as possible. Of course, in a way that uh, common people could understand, because um, yeah, a lot of these uh, projects can be really, really technical, and uh, they are quite a bit. I mean, quite far from the perception of the public. So my role is to somehow boil it down and to to put it in a easily understandable language in order to promote the project and its uh, benefits and its um, yeah its results basically uh, throughout Slovenia and the region as, as such. Okay. Um, just generally speaking, what would you say? What are the lessons learned so far from your side and, and what are your next steps and expectations for the results um, of this work? Mm -hmm. So the lessons learned, uh, the main lesson learned is that definitely these kind of te technologies are needed and are going to be more and more needed in the future. So what we are doing in Nixtex, we have installed the power to heat boiler in our pilot site around it. It's a six megawatt boiler that it's intended to offer a tertiary reserve to the TSO. So when there's a surplus of renewable energy in the grid, either coming from Northern Sea in Germany or from hydropower plants from the Balkans, uh, this could uh, cause a surge in the, of the energy in the, in the network. And this is where our power to heat boiler comes in to take this excess, excess energy out of the network and turn it into the uh, heat energy and then distribute it towards the uh, district heating system in the uh, near, nearby town. So these are the technologies that are going to be definitely much more needed in the future as we are seeing renewables are coming more and more into the primary, uh, primary plan in, in our energy, energy mix. And in order to stabilize the, the production and stabilize the grid conditions, these kind of technologies will definitely be needed. So that's uh, the, main, the main lesson learned is that we are in just at the right time and the right place to start testing these technologies right now, because in five, 10 years, they could, be, they could present the backbone of the, of the energy, energy system as a such. Mm -hmm. uh, 
also working on uh, some of, on some aspects of um, um, e-mobility uh, management. So this is another aspect that we see coming into the future in the next five, 10 years. A lot more people are buying electric cars and we don't have the use cases and methodologies how to handle when a lot of users um, plug in their electric car at the same time in some, uh, let's say, low, low voltage grid. Uh, this could be a big impact on the grid. It could also uh, cause uh, quite, quite some issues and even yeah, breaking, breaking down of the grid if this is just too much. Mm -hmm. What we are doing in XFlex, we are developing algorithms and models in order based on, on one side on the market uh, conditions and on the other side on the desire of the user. So when does he want his car to be filled, how much he wants to pay for this electricity and taking all this data into one model and algorithm in order to provide a systematic approach on how to sort, sort of... Um, um, to, to, to make the grid less uh, impacted by so much electric vehicles being charged at the same time. Uh, so the, the end goal is that at six or seven o'clock in the morning, when everybody needs to go to work, everybody has their cars charged. So, but this could mean that one car could charge for eight hours, one car could charge for four, one could be charged in two. And this is the logic and the brains behind that system that we are now developing and could be then used in the future of the with the managers of electric uh, electric um, uh, fleets and uh, e-charges in general mm -hmm. and as such could be one big user of that because we have more than 200 um, e-chargers around slovenia and the region so definitely this is something that we will be able to use in the future also okay so i think most of what you said right now answered my last question regarding the expected benefits and the exploiting uh, yeah. of the results. Um, if you want to add something more regarding that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely we touched on that. There are those, I already explained some of the benefits, but these benefits now needs to be shared with some other players in the, in the region and in the energy market as such. Uh, the TSOs and other, um, other players on the market need to be aware of these solutions. They need to be aware of our use cases in order for this technology also to proliferate uh, even bigger, right? It's not enough that it stays in one company and only one company knows about it. So I think our next job, our job in the next year or so will be to promote this technology as much as possible with different actors on the, on the energy market. Um, so that's definitely something that we will work on and try to promote this power to X technology even further in whatever shape and form, because here we can use also heat pumps, we can use normal, we can use these kind of boilers that we have. Um, we could use electric cars once they are ready to be bidirectional, so they could communicate with the grid in both ways. So this is something that is definitely going to be uh, be the future, and that's where we see that we need to put most of our efforts in. Okay, thank you very much for all this information and joining, Boyan. If you want to get more information about the project, um, please go to the website via the link given below. Thanks for watching again and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening.